Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We bless your name today. We thank you because we know you are still the God of power. And the God of all authority, you will never fail. You can never fail. And tonight, something good is happening to everybody in Jesus' name. Send your power down. Break every yoke here tonight. Destroy the works of the devil tonight. And set your people free. We well, thank you because we know it's done. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Another amen before you sit down. Thank you very much. You can sit down. You may not have a Bible in your hand there. Don't worry about that. I read the Bible passage to you. I may call a passage of scripture you don't even know where to find. Just relax. The word will come to you. And as the word enters you, power will enter your life. The power that rolls away every sickness. The power that rolls away every infirmity. The power that destroys the works of Satan. That power is coming with the word tonight. In Psalm 123 verse 2. Psalm 123 verse 2. Behold, as the eyes of the servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of their mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until he have mercy upon us. Then the Bible is talking about the masters. It says every servant would look up to the master for all their sustenance, for all their supply, and for everything they need in life. That the servants are looking at their masters. And it says so our eyes are looking upon you to have salvation. To have healing, to have deliverance, to have the power that breaks every yoke, to have deliverance in our lives. Our eyes are looking upon the Lord. See this. Look at this. Behold, as the eyes of the servants look unto the hand of their masters. Is saying that not everybody has the same master. Some have this master. Another one has that master. And so I'm asking you a question tonight. Who is your master? What happens to you in life? Will depend on who your master is. Who is master? The master is the director of your life. The master is the dictator of everything that happens in your life. The master is the decision maker of your life. The master says go. And you go. The master says come. And you come. The master says sit. And you sit. Who is your master? Because you're going to look up to your master. And whatever your master is able to provide, that is what you have. And it says tonight, the servants are looking up to their master. And when you decide who your master is, then you'll be able to tell what you're going to have in life. Not only what you have on earth, what you have in eternity after you close your eyes in days what you have on the in the great beyond 
will depend on who your master is. So I'm asking you the question again. Who is your master? Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 3 here. It says, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's grip. But Israel did not know, my people does not consider. It says, even the animals know their masters. A goat will know its master. A sheep will know its master. The ass will know its master. If they know their master, I'm asking you the question, who is your master? Who controls your life? Who directs your life? Who is the decision maker in your life? Who is the supplier in your life? Who dictates the way you go in your life? Who is your master? Malachi chapter 1. And I'm reading to you from verse 6. Malachi chapter 1. We're looking at verse 6. Here is the almighty God now talking to you. And he's asking you an important question. He wants you to decide today. He wants you to make up your mind today. Who is your master? Because if you don't decide that, somebody will be controlling your life. Somebody will be directing you. Because the hand of the master will be felt, will be known in your life. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. His son honoreth his father. And his servant his master. It says, this is what we all know. There's some of you there, you work under a master. You are an apprentice under a master. You are serving under a master. And you are being trained under a master. And therefore you understand. You honor the master. You obey the master. You follow the master. You give obedience to the master. You surrender, you submit to the master. That's what verse 6 is saying. His son honoreth his father, and his servant honoreth his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts unto you. The question once again, who is your master? This world in which we live is divided into two. One side, Satan is the master. The other side, God is the master. And I bring to you tonight the opportunity for you to make up your mind. And the opportunity for you to decide. To say, this is my master. And to say, I want the Lord to be my master. You make a choice in your life. Who will be your master? Satan or the Savior? Satan or Jesus Christ? Satan or the Lord himself? Who will be your father? That you will glorify. That you will honor. That you will follow. Satan or the almighty God? 
That's why the question comes to you again. Who is your master? As I told you, you are on either under master Satan or you are under master Savior. You make up your mind. And tonight I invite you that you leave that place where you were. The place where you are being. The people you have been surrendering to. The power you have been surrendering to. And the power you submit your life to. I know that Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. He died for you. So he will be your master and your Lord. And when you come to Jesus your master. You come to Jesus your savior. Salvation will come. Are you there? I said salvation will come. When you come to Jesus, your master, the one who died for you, mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to deliver. When you come to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, he will change your life. He will turn everything around. He will transform your life. Something is going to happen to you tonight. Are you there? I said something will happen to you tonight. The question again. Never forget this in your life. Who is your master? Number one. That he is. I'm going to give you three points before we pray. Number one. Great suffering under Master Satan. You go and check up. Anyone that surrenders his life to Satan. Anyone that submits his life to Satan. Anyone that yields obedience to Satan. Anyone that gives allegiance to Satan. Anyone that surrenders life, past, present, and future unto Satan, he surrenders unto suffering. He surrenders unto heartache. He surrenders unto sickness. He surrenders unto demonic attack. Great, great suffering under Master Satan. But thank God something will change tonight. I say, thank God something will change tonight. There's gracious salvation through the merciful Savior. Gracious salvation through the merciful Savior. Salvation that comes by grace. Help that comes by grace. Healing that comes by grace. Deliverance that comes by grace. Joy that comes by grace. Victory that comes by grace. Deliverance that comes by grace. Gracious salvation through the merciful Savior. When you come and you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you say, he is my Savior. It will happen tonight. I said it will happen tonight. I said it will happen tonight. When you say, he will be my savior. He will be my lord. He will be my master. Something will change in heaven. Something will change on earth. Something will change in your heart. Something will change in your soul. Something will change in your personality. Something will change in your family. A change is coming. A change is coming. A transformation is coming. I'm talking about somebody there. I said I'm talking to somebody there. I said I'm talking to somebody there. Somebody wants a change. Somebody wants a transformation. Somebody wants life. He wants eternal life. He wants all the suffering to be taken away. All the power of sin to be broken. 
all the power of Satan to be broken. Because there is gracious salvation in the merciful Savior. You know, he doesn't just be our Savior. There is something with you. There's something you have to do. When, if you want him to be your Savior, your Lord, your Master, your Shepherd. And you want him to save your soul. And you want him to heal your body. And you want him to deliver you. And you want him to cancel every oppression, every attack out of your life. There is a glorious surrender to the mighty shepherd. A glorious surrender to the mighty shepherd. Glorious surrender to the mighty shepherd. When you say, yes, I understand. Satan is there on the one side. And the Savior is here on this other side. And I'm going to make my choice. I want the salvation of the Lord. I want healing from the Lord. I want deliverance from the Lord. I want the power of heaven to come upon my life and change me and transform my life. Then you make a surrender. A glorious surrender. An absolute surrender. A permanent surrender. An unchanging, unwavering surrender. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me. And the cross before me. I'm going to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I make him my savior. I make him my lord. I make him my master. The moment you do that. I said the moment you do that. Something great will happen to you. And it's tonight. Where are you? I said it's tonight. Where are you there? I said it's tonight. It will happen in Jesus' name. Hold on now. Point number one. Great, great suffering. Under Master Satan. I, I, I'll show you somebody. It's an illustration of the people that make Satan their master. And the great suffering they have. Suffering in life. Suffering at death. Suffering after death. I told you don't worry if you don't know the Bible passage. We're looking at Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. I'm reading here from verse 43. Mark chapter 14, verse 43. And immediately while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve. And this man was even a church goer. This man was even a religious man. And yet, look at his name. His name is Judas. What did he say? Look at verse 45. And as soon as he was come, he, he goes straight away to him and said, Master, Master, and he kissed him. You know there are people, Master, Master, and he kissed him. If you ask somebody else, who is the master of Judas? Oh, they will say it's Jesus. They say, were well, you not there? He came to Jesus. He even bent down and kissed him. And he said, master, master. But in reality, my friend, who was the master of Judas? Who was the Lord of Judas? Who was the controller of Judas? Who was the director of Judas? 
who was the decision maker for Judas? Master, master, let me show you. Luke chapter 22, I'm reading verse 3. Luke chapter 22, we're looking at verse 3. Uh, look at what it says here. Luke chapter 22, verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. The spirit that walked inside him was the spirit of Satan. The power that walked inside him was the power of Satan. The decision maker in Judah's life was Satan himself. Anyone who is living in sin, the decision maker of his life is not Jesus, is Satan. Anyone who is practicing evil, anyone who is wicked, anyone who tells a lie, anyone who is a drunkard, anyone who is a criminal, the Bible says the master is Satan. He directs them, he instructs them, he leads them, he controls them. Mm -mm. They may go to church. They may go to a synagogue. They may go to a ministry. They may go to a church. But if they're still living in sin, Jesus said their master is Satan. There was one day, those Jewish people, religious people, they wore their gowns and garments to the ankle of their feet. They paraded themselves as religious people. And they say, we are the sons and the daughters of Abraham. And Jesus, nobody ever told the truth like Jesus. Nobody ever pointed the reality to people like Jesus. And he said, you are of your father, the devil. And the works of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And a liar and the father of lies. He told them that if you are living in sin, your master is Satan. And people who are directed by Satan, they suffer. They suffer on earth. They suffer in death. And they suffer in hell forever and ever. Satan will not be my master. I don't know about you. I said Satan will not be my master. That's why the Lord is calling you today. Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sin from the beginning. Then he said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. What sin is there in your life? It will bring condemnation. What sin do you have in your life? It will bring guilt upon you. It will bring shame upon you. What sin do you have in your life? It will be sorrow and suffering. If you die in that condition, you will suffer at the point of death. Because you say, had I known, I would have repented. Had I known, I would not have followed Satan as master. If you die in that condition, after death, there is hellfire. After death, there is suffering. And it is not suffering for one year or two years or ten years, forever and ever and ever. That's why the Lord is calling you today. Who will be your master from tonight? You turn away from your sin. You repent of your sin. You say Satan will not be my master anymore. 
You say the devil will not be my master anymore. You say that deceiver will not be my master anymore. I am crossing over to Jesus. I am crossing over to Jesus. Anybody there? I said anybody there? I am crossing over to Jesus. He will save you. He will forgive you. He will receive you. Whatever you have done. He will not say, I no go with your master Satan. You can make the choice tonight. That you will not die in sin. You can make the choice tonight. That you will not continue in sin. You can make your choice tonight that you come to the side of Jesus Christ, your Lord and your Savior. You, will you come? I said, will you come? I'm asking, I said, will you come? Whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast away. As you come, he will receive you. As you come, he will forgive you. As you come, he will change your life. Give me a good, good amen. Point number two. Now, point number two. Gracious salvation. Gracious forgiveness. Gracious eternal life. And gracious mercy. Through the merciful Savior. You see, the Lord Jesus is merciful. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, tonight has to come. And you say, yes, Lord, you'll be my master. Yes, Lord, you'll be my savior. Yes, Lord, you'll be my redeemer. You love me so much. And you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Because of that love, because of that mercy, I turn around. I turn to the Lord. And as you turn to the Lord tonight, grace will save you. Did you hear that? The mercy of God will save you. Did you hear that? The love of God will save you. It will save you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you are see quicked who are dead in trespasses and sins. He said now he quickened you, he made you alive. He quickened you and brought you into life eternal. He said, you were dead in sins and trespasses. But now he says, he has made you alive. Tonight you'll come alive. Your soul will come alive. Your spirit will come alive. Everything that is dead inside you there will come alive. That dead brain will come alive. The deaf ears will come alive. All the dead nerves of your eyes will come alive. He starts from inside you. He, start, he starts in your soul. He starts in your spirit. And he quickens you. And then it says, wherein in time past ye walked according to the cause of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. That's the part that controlled you before. That's the part that controls the whole world. That's the part that controls every sinner. That's the part that controls every backslider. It says, according to the course of this world, Satan has a curriculum for the people in the world. He has a syllabus of sinning, of defilement, of crime, of evil, of drunkenness. A syllabus for every sinner in the world. 
And so the people are under the master Satan. They follow that curriculum. They follow that course. But now he goes on to tell us in verse 2 there. He says the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit that walketh in the, in the children of disobedience. The people who are lawless. The people who are rebellious. There's a spirit walking inside them. It's the spirit of their master Satan. But thank God for Calvary. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for that gracious salvation. And tonight is coming to you. I say that salvation is coming to you. The Lord will save you and take you out of the hand of that master Satan. From tonight, Satan will not be your master again in Jesus' name. He says in verse 3, among whom we also, we all had a conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath as others. Look at verse 4. Wonderful. I said, look at verse 4. This is wonderful. And it is for you. Wonder of all wonders. The mercy of God will save you. Wonder of all wonders. The mercy of God will forgive you. Wonder of all wonders. You will make up your mind tonight and get away from Satan and come unto Christ as your master, your Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. He tells us about the love of God. Tells us about the mercy of God. Tells us about the grace of God. Even when we were dead in sins, as quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. By grace ye are saved. By grace ye are saved. Verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Jesus is Savior. And Jesus is Savior here tonight. And Jesus is the merciful Savior here tonight. He will have mercy on you. I said, it will have mercy on you. That's why the angel said, when Jesus was about to be born, he said, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. For he shall save his people from their sins. He is Savior. That's why Jesus Christ himself said, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He has come to you tonight. I said he has come to you tonight. He has come to save you. He will save you. He will forgive you. He will set you free. He will turn your life around completely in Jesus' name. But you have a part to play. You must have something to do. That you have this glorious surrender to the mighty shepherd. He is the mighty savior. And he is the mighty shepherd. And as you come. And as you surrender. The totality of your life. 
unto Christ, he saves you and you surrender. He forgives you. You surrender. He heals you. You surrender. You say, Satan will not be my master anymore. Sin will not be my master anymore. Sorcery will not be my master anymore. Wickedness will not be my master anymore. And you make a full surrender. A total surrender. A complete surrender. A permanent perpetual surrender. Unto the Lord. Grace will come into your life. And something's wonderful. Something supernatural. Something you never knew before. Welcome to your life tonight in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63. I'm reading to you here from verse 1. It's talking about this Jesus. It's talking about this Lord. It's talking about this master. It's talking about the one that is asking you tonight, will you take me as your Lord and Savior? Will you take me as your master and as your Lord? Will you take me as the decision maker in your life? And as you come, and you say, yes, Lord, I surrender my life to you, today and forever. I surrender my life to you, absolutely and completely as we tell the lord tonight i surrender my life to you you'll be my master you'll be my savior you'll be my lord you'll be my shepherd you'll be my healer you'll be my deliverer a miracle will happen in your life right there can i hear a good amen there Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? With dyed garments from Bozra. This that is glorious in his apparel. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save I that speak in redemption mighty to redeem I that speak as a deliverer mighty to deliver I that speak in righteousness mighty to save I that speak in power mighty to set you free is the mighty shepherd and tonight has to come to him i can see blind eyes being opened tonight i can see those lame people raising up their crutches and walking tonight i can see power coming upon your right there and i can see those eyes that were blind being opened tonight the decision is in your hand that to say Satan will not be my master anymore. Sin will not be my master anymore. Wickedness will not be my master anymore. All those evil things I did in the past, I did under the control of Satan. But tonight, I'm going to cross over to Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You died for me. You are merciful. You are loving. You are gracious. And you have said, whosoever will come to you, you will not cast away. Tonight I come. Tonight I come. Tonight I come. It's calling you. Get away from the authority of Satan. Get away from the dominion of Satan. See all the suffering you've got under Satan. And come to Jesus who is ready to save you. And come to Jesus who is ready to deliver you. 
and come to Jesus who is ready to heal you. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Heads bowed and eyes closed. What are you there tonight? You want to make Jesus Christ your Savior and your Lord. You want to surrender your heart, your life unto Jesus. He'll be your Savior, he'll be your Lord. You'll say, Jesus, be my Savior. Jesus, be my Lord. I will not go back to those sins anymore. Lying bye-bye forever. Drunkenness bye-bye forever. Wickedness bye-bye forever. Fighting bye-bye forever. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Jesus to be my Savior. Wherever you are, you will raise up your hand. Jesus will be my Savior. Jesus will be my Savior. What is he there? What are you there? What is she there? He'll be your Savior. You raise up your hand. Anywhere you are. Anywhere you are. He wants you to change masters. And to make Jesus your Lord and Savior tonight. If you're raising up your hand, you will stand up. If you're raising up your hand, you'll stand up. Wonderful. Wonderful. Jesus is going to be your Savior tonight. Wonderful. Jesus is going to be your Lord tonight. Jesus wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to come away from the authority of Satan. And all the sins you have been committing. He wants to come. I want you to come out of that sin. And come unto the Lord. Are you, are you ready? I said, are you ready? Close your eyes and begin to tell the Lord. I forsake my sin. I forsake my evil. I forsake my drunkenness. I forsake my wickedness. I forsake the defilement in my life. I forsake all those abominations. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Satan will not be my master anymore. The devil will not be my Lord anymore. Evil will not control me anymore. But Jesus will be my Savior. Jesus will be my Savior. Jesus will be my Savior. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. I make Jesus my Savior and my Lord. I make Jesus my Savior and my Lord. Keep on coming. It was still there at the back. Jesus is calling you. Satan will ruin your life. Satan will destroy your life. Satan will pull you down to the pit of hell. But Jesus will lift you up today. Jesus will forgive you today. Jesus will change your life today. Whosoever committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. He has come to save you tonight. In Jesus name we pray. And everybody said amen. Lift up those hands. You pray after me. You say from the depth of your heart. Would you do that? I said will you do that? You say it aloud. And say it exactly as I say it. You put emphasis on it. So that we know you are sinning from the depth of your heart. Are you ready now? Father. Almighty God. I know you created me. Lord I am sorry. That in the past. I gave my life to Satan. To direct me. To rule me. To decide for me. To commit sin. To do evil. Lord, I am sorry. I declare tonight. Satan will not be my master anymore. I declare tonight. 
I come out of darkness. I declare tonight, I turn away from my sin. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. He will be my Savior. He will be my Lord. I believe tonight, you will forgive me. Lord, forgive. Lord, forgive. Set me free. Set me free. I receive Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord. I thank you, Lord. You have accepted me. And you have received me. My sins are forgiven. Say that aloud. My sins are forgiven. Say that again. My sins are forgiven. I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to pray for you now. Raise up those hands. That's a sign I surrender. All to Jesus I surrender. He will be my savior. He is my Lord. From now and forever and ever. Keep up those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you at this time. I thank you because of your love and mercy. I pray, Lord, that all these who have given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, repenting of their sins, turning away from their sins, I pray you forgive them in Jesus' name. Give them your salvation. Give them your forgiveness. Let eternal life come to them in Jesus' name. Confirm that salvation in their hearts. Let the joy of salvation be in them. And the tree that comes with salvation be in them. Confirm it in every heart. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Put those hands together for Jesus. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. A miracle is coming your way. Somebody is catching miracle there tonight. Blind eyes are opening there tonight. Look at that lame man. You are going to walk tonight. And that deaf and dumb person you brought to will hear will speak tonight. Tumors will vanish away. Cancer will be healed. Your ulcer will go. That mountain of a problem is going to be rolled away tonight in Jesus' name. Don't wait for another time. This is your time. What are you? I said, this is your time. If you need a healing, a deliverance, a miracle, raise up one hand there. Then you lay the other hand where you have the problem. And after the final, amen. You check up yourself. Everything would have gone. Then you come out here. Because you will have testimony. Wonderful. I said wonderful. It's coming your way. It's coming right now. Raise up one hand. Lay the other hand on yourself. I'm praying for you now. When you hear amen, that's the, that's the notice that your miracle has arrived. Father, in the name of Jesus. We well, bless your name because you are forever the same. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You said, I am God, I change not. What you did in the past, what you have done in other places, you are doing over here tonight. Send forth your power, deliver your people in Jesus' name. 
Send forth your power, heal your people in Jesus' name. Send out the miracle. Send out the deliverance. Send out the healing. Touch everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. That person having the spirit of insanity, I command that spirit of insanity, come out in Jesus' name. That spirit of epilepsy, I command you, be healed, be delivered, and never come back again in Jesus' name. That swelling in your body, I command that swelling, come out in Jesus' name. That tumor, come out in Jesus' name. Fibroid, come out in Jesus' name. Whatever property of the devil have been packed inside your stomach, inside your brain, inside your body, inside that the delicate part of your body, I command, come out in Jesus' name. That asthma instantaneously be healed in Jesus' name. That pain, internal pain, be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Pile, be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, dry cough or coughing up blood, immediately now, be healed in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS, you are free. HIV AIDS, you are free. Be healed in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, the Lord touch your ears right now. The Lord touch your tongues right now. Let sound come into those ears. Be healed in Jesus' name. Those dumb tongues, speak out right now. Speak out clearly. The Lord touch you right now. Receive your speaking ability in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that person that has a sword in the, uh, sword in the uh, private part. Lord, I pray, heal them in Jesus' name. Pain of arthritis, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and knees, and ankle. Anywhere arthritis is, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, I send for the power of God into your body. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. One leg shorter than the other, I command the short leg, grow out in Jesus' name. Stroke, be healed in Jesus' name. And those who have some parts missing in their body, I pray that a creative miracle will be done right now. That missing part in your body be created and be given to you and be whole right now in Jesus' name. Those who are blind, I pray the Lord will touch your blindness right now. Blindness, come out in Jesus' name. All that darkness, come out in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Everywhere now, miracle. Everywhere, healing. Everywhere, deliverance. Receive your own. You are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. Rejoice in the confirmation of your miracle. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.